Some of the great, greatest innovations and developments um, in the world often happen at the intersection of two fields. So tonight I'd like to tell you about the intersection that I'm most excited about at this very moment, which is entertainment and robotics. So if we're trying to make robots that can be more expressive and that can connect better with us in society, maybe we should look to some of the human professionals of artificial emotion and personality that occur in the uh, dramatic arts. I'm also interested in creating two new technologies for the arts um, and to attract people to science and technology. Um, some people in the last decade or two have started creating artwork with technology. With my new venture, Marilyn Monrobot, I would like to use art to create tech. So we're based in New York City, and if you're a performer that wants to collaborate with an adorable robot, or if you have a robot that needs entertainment representation, please contact me, the bot agent. The bot, our rising celebrity, also has his own Twitter account, um, Robot in the Wild. So I'd like to introduce you to one of our first robots, Data. He's named after the Star Trek character. I think he's going to be super popular. We've got the robot. In his head is a database of a lot of jokes. Now, each of these jokes is labeled with certain attributes. So it knows something about the subject, it knows about the length, it knows how much it's moving. And so it's going to try to watch your response. I actually have no idea what my robot is going to do today. <laughs> So it can also learn from you about the, the quality of its jokes and cater things uh, sort of like Netflix style over the longer term to different communities or audiences. Uh, children versus adults, different cultures. You can learn something from the robot about kind of the community that you're in. And also I can use each and one of you as the acting coach to our future robot companions. So some of you in this middle section, you have red, green paddles. If you like what's going on, you should do the green. If you don't like the subject or the performance, you can hold the red. Now, don't be shy. Um, it's just a robot. It doesn't have feelings <laughs> yet. Um, <laughs> and the rest of you, are you still count. You still matter. There's also a microphone that's listening to the aggregate laughter and applause and booing. I hope not, um, to uh, help make some of its next decisions. Right, so let the robot stand-up comedy begin. Hello, dead women. It's an honor to be here. You guys are looking good out there. Ready for some jokes? Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Here's the first one. Right. So, a doctor says to his patient, I have bad news and worse news. The bad news is that you only have 24 hours to live. That's terrible, said the patient. How can the news possibly be worse? I've been trying to contact you since yesterday. <laughs> the Swiss have an interesting army. 500 years without a war. He's talking about the Swiss. Pretty lucky for them. Ever see that little Swiss army knife they have to fight with? Come on, buddy. I have the toe clippers right here. You get past me. The guy behind me has a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> He is a French robot. Of New Jersey hunters are out in the woods. One of them falls to the ground. He does not seem to be breathing. The other guy whips out his cell phone and calls 911. He gasps to the operator, my friend is dead. What can I do? The operator says, just take it easy. I can help. First, let's make sure he's dead. There is a silence, then the operator hears a shot. The guy's voice comes back on the line. Okay. Now what? <laughs> Question. Why is television called a medium? Anyone? Because it's neither rare 
No, well done. But to be completely honest with you, I kind of love television. Any of you like television? I find it incredibly educational, actually. As soon as someone turns it on, I go into the other room and read. <laughs> <laughs> That's all for now. Was that okay for my first time? <laughs> You've been a great audience. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> So this is actually the first time we've ever done live audience feedback to a performance. So thank you all for being a part of it. There's a lot more to come. <laughs> and we hope to learn a lot about robot expression. Thank you very much. The precision of a watch is a function of its movement. For Rolex and for Hans Wilsdorf, to guarantee the precision of a timepiece, the pressing question was how to protect the movement itself from the elements, not only water, but also tiny particles of dust. In 1926, a major step was taken with the creation of the world's first waterproof and dustproof wristwatch. The Rolex Oyster was born. Over the years, subtle changes in the design continue to improve the Oyster, adding more comfort while keeping the style contemporary. And along with style, more functions have been added. A Rolex wristwatch was the first to show the date through a small aperture on the face. It was also the first wristwatch to spell out the day of the week in full. In the early 1950s, Rolex developed professional watches whose functions went far beyond telling the time. Launched in 1953, the Submariner was the first Rolex watch guaranteed waterproof to a depth of 330 feet. Already on an incredible journey of innovation and design, Rolex decided to push the boundaries even further. In 1960, the Bathyscaphe Trieste and Rolex made history. The submersible successfully dived to 35,800 feet below the surface of the ocean. A Rolex deep sea special was strapped to the outside. The development of undersea exploration led to the launching in 1967 of the Sea Dweller 2000, waterproof to a depth of 2,000 feet. In 2008, the Submariner in gold is redesigned and the case features a new unidirectional rotatable bezel with a serochrome disc. Fitted with the patented Rolex ring lock system, the Rolex Deep Sea safely descends to 12,800 feet. has incorporated countless hours and more than a century of experience, years of research, innovation, and development into every one of its models. And the benefits arising from this work, including waterproofness, precision, and durability, are the result of Rolex's continuous pursuit of perfection. From the most elegant and prestigious models to the professional timepieces, all are exquisitely crafted. Piece by piece, we design and manufacture every single watch. And the story continues.